Hi, and welcome to another episode of the 8-Bit Retro Refix. Um, sorry I've not been on for the last week. Um, I've been re-doing um, all my uh, games room back out, reorganising it, just turned it into a pure Commodore games room, um, which if you'd be interested in looking at that and seeing that, just pop us a comment in the bottom um, and I'll take some pictures and let you have a look on the next video or something like that. Um, so while I've been away this week, I've been collecting um, some games, which I'll show you a picture, just up there now, or over here, <laughs> of some games. We've picked up some rare things, there's one in there called Gun, and that's also uh, Cytronics. It's a newish one, but it has been signed by Oliver Frey. I'll show you a picture there, look where it's just been signed in. Yep. Um, we've also picked up this uh, Commodore VIC-20 from Alex off uh, Facebook. Um, I'll put you another picture up there so you can have a look and see how Alex. Alex is selling a lot of uh, his Commodore gear off because um, he's looking to get a mortgage. Uh, so if you want to find him on Facebook and uh, have a look in the groups of Commodore for sale groups, he's selling a lot of stuff in there. He's a good lad, he's well trustable, just like Lethal he is on Facebook. So we've got this Commodore VIC-20 with the pet keys. I've always wanted one with the pet keys. This one has um, gabble on the screen, he said when I bought it. Um, but when I switch it on, um, I see it powered up now. You can't see it on the screen because it looks a little bit black. So if I just power that up now, you can't see anything on screen, but you can see it's displaying black screen. I'll take a little screenshot and then pop that up there just to show you what it actually looks like. You can see it a bit better on that image there that I'm showing you now. Um, but all I've got is this sort of a, a band at the top and a load of wavy lines down the side there. So I'm not getting any video signal at all. So we're going to be taking a look at that. We've also picked up off Lee Foley a boxed Oceanic 118 drive. Unfortunately, there's no power supply. There is the polys in here, but we do need to get down and have a look at this one and test it out and see whether it's working or not. I do have a couple of these, so I do have one power supply that we can test with. Um, but I believe these ones um, include the Jiffy, Jiffy DOS. I have popped the bottom off. So if you have a look in that picture up there, you can see it's got Jiffy DOS in it. So that's really good. So that's something else to be looking at in a future video. I've also picked up a Commodore 16. This sort were also off Alex. Um, it does work, it's just got the broken plungers in the keyboard and there's a couple of keys missing. Um, so I've ordered another keyboard for that. So that'll be in another future video. We're gonna have a look at that and uh, sorting it out, putting some heat sinks on these chips and things like that on here. Um, but yeah, that's another video. So if you'd like to see anything up and coming, just mention it in comments. Um, uh, what you'd like me to do next, or see next, um, and we'll get on with it. So what I'm going to do today is we're going to take a look at this VIC-20. We know it's got no signal, we know it fires up. If this were a, a, a Commodore 64, and with that signal on there, I switch it on again, it just gives me that block bar at the top and, and the lines down the bottom again. It's very difficult for me to show you that on camera. Um, but normally when you switch, switch the Commodore 64 on, I think it's either a 7801 or it's an 8701. I can't quite remember which way around it is. There's a little clock chip at the side of the VIC chip on the Commodore and you don't see a pulse. Normally when that's gone on the Commodore 64, so you're not getting actually a video signal at all. Um, so I'm suspecting that it's somewhere around the video signal. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to pop the top off um, and we'll take a look inside. I do want to lift the motherboard out. Um, I've no doubt it's got the paper inside it. So I'm just going to take the screws off now, out of the bottom, and, and lift the lid off and then I'll come back to you. So I've just taken them screws out now and we've lifted the lid off, as you can see. This one by the looks of it, it's got all the tags broken off the back, so we're going to do something about that as well. I'm going to put some brackets in here that are 3D printed um, and bond them back down there so it's got some clips to secure the back down. So I'm just going to set that to one side for the minute. And there you go, we've got the top off 
as suspected, we've got this cardboard silver shield that does absolutely nothing but keep the heat in. It was there for RF reasons, but I don't think it, it just traps heat inside it and the chips don't like it. So I'm just going to remove that now. And then once I've taken the screws out, I'll come back to you. There's uh, It's quite nice in here. It looks like the full main board. This seems to be moving about a little bit, so I want to tighten that up. Um, it looks really nice. So I'm just going to pull these screws out. There's one down right at this side over here. There's one there, one there, uh, one there, one there, one there, one up the back there. And we should be able to lift this board straight out. Because I want to get short of this paper, this paper thing shielding underneath it. It's no good for it. Just traps the heat in. So I'm just going to do that now. Um, and then I'll come back to you again once this shield's out and the board's out. So I've just taken all them screws out. I've just popped them down to the side, just, just over here on the blue mat. So what I'm going to do now is just lift that board out and get shut of this crappy heat shield that does no good but trap heating. So I'm just going to throw that away now. So that's gone. So we'll just take the base plate away, bottom casing if you like, and then we're down to the main board. So we'll plug the air reel back in, because we need that. I'm going to plug the power supply back in, because obviously we're going to need that. And then I'm going to have a look around and see whether I can find um, the voltages around the board, make sure they're all in, that they're all okay. If we're getting voltage around the board, then it's more than likely going to be um, one of the chips around here. Um, I've got a strong suspicion that it is something to do um, with the video signal, especially with what we're getting on there. So I'll just see if I can pan you up and see if I can show you again, and see if it comes up onto the screen. Sorry you've got my mug shot in there, but switch it on, look. Yeah, you can just see that band, can't you, at the top of the screen? You can just sort of see the band line across there. Um, you can see it's stripy across the bottom where you can see my head. Um, but that's all we're getting out of there. So what I want to do first is I've, I've gone onto the internet. And I've found out what we need to be looking at. For the pinout on the VIC chip. So you can see on there now we've got all the DB lines, we've got all the A lines on the right hand side at the bottom, the addressing lines, uh, we've no connect, um, we've sync and luma at the top there look, and we've got VSS at the bottom. VSS is normally the power in, or VCC is normally the power in. So I'm going to have a look around there and just check that, make sure we've got power around the VIC chip first. So here we are with the VIC chip. I've got my multimeter out, we'll just have a look and we'll have a look to see whether this bottom left corner, this is the pin one, so that's at the top there, so we want to be at the back side, so that back pin there, yep, and we've got the voltage on, on there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to check the voltages down at the CPU and on the kernels. As you can see there on the clock there, so I'm going to go straight to the VCC or VSS, whichever you want to call it. I'll switch it back on again. So you can see we've got 5.1 volts there. We've got 5.1 volts there. I'll just go for this other one over this side here. And we've got 5.1 volts there. So that's showing us that we've got signals into the CPU and into the kernel ROMs and character ROMs. So let's just have a look at a RAM. So excuse me, I'm just going to move you over to a RAM. So let's just have a look, see if we can find anything on these RAM chips. I'll bring that back for you, have a quick look, see if you can see, look, a bit difficult, but We've got 5.1 volts on the RAM chips too. Just check the CIAs up here. You can't see that's off screen at the minute. But I'm just going to touch that there. And we've got 4 volts up there. 5 volts on out on the user port. 
5 volts we've got 5 volts out on the tape port so we've got voltage around the board we know that so we've still got gabble all over the screen um, so I mean normally I'd look at the logics of these chips first again we've been saying to you before about it like the Commodore 64 you mean you've got the logic chips around here you've got some variable resistors up here you've one that's hiding around the back of this crystal um, so it could, potentially it could be one of these chips around here I'm, I'm suspecting it's a 6561 VIC because there's not a lot coming out of there so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pull that VIC chip out of there and we're going to change it and put a fresh VIC in there um, I do have a spare it came out of another board so we've got this one and it is quite in keeping look I don't know whether you can see on this chip here but it's upside down to be honest it's um, 39th week 1981 so this is fairly close we're looking at 2882 so I'm going to swap that VIC out and put this one in and let's see if it makes any difference to the board these are usually holding in quite tight so I'm just going to use my little chip puller here these are you've got to be careful with these because they bend on the end um, a little bit bad it'd be nice if it is just this Vic make sure it's turned off before we do anything so I'm just gonna lift that into there it's very tight in these sockets so I'm gonna have to give it a little bit of wiggle and force until it comes up there we go that's that out so if I spin that one round now as you can see it's a 6561 E 36 week 81 bit battered up that top side and all there. I don't know whether you can see that, it looks really bad. Let's see if we can get some light on it. On that corner there, it looks, looks like it's junk or it's broken. Or it's cracked or something like that, I'm not sure. But, let's just try that now. So let's have a look at the silt screen and make sure we're putting this in the right way around. As you can just see, just down that side there, just down there, you can see the notch out. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'll just try and lift that up a bit for you. There you go, look. See that notch? So we know that pin one and notch needs to go that way. So that's my 81 chip, don't want that one. This is his 82 chip. Let's put this one in. It's come out of a good one. So you can see legs are, are good. There's no solder on the legs don't like seeing solder on the legs it, it destroys these chip sockets to be honest so I'm just going to sit that down on the left hand side and put a row of legs in and make sure the other side are, are in as well I like to try and get it into the centre of the socket and we can just push that down so that's it has that fixed this problem? can we be that lucky? let's pan back up to the screen and let's see if we can get anything out of the screen switch her on yeah, we've got power. Do the keys work? Back arrow, one, two, three, four, five, six, oops, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Pound sign, clear home, goes to top, insta delete. Yeah, it deletes. Uh, CTRL, do we change colours? Yes, we do. Go back to blue, QU, QWERTY. Yep, they're all working. Restore. Yep, that works. Uh, run stop, shift run stop. Yep, break. Yep, run stop works. Shift. So yeah, we can see it's getting the ASCII keys. So we'll go back to A, Z, D, E, F, E, P, K, F, 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 Brackets. Minus. Return works. Does the Commodore key work? Should changes should changes. Yeah, it does. Yep, Commodore keeps working. Set X. Will be. It's a shift key. That's his arrow key. The shift key works there. You won't see, see much on file now for the F1 keys, but if I if I tap the F7, you can see the cursor flash. If I tap the F5, that doesn't want to do. 
does if I wiggle it, if I press doesn't do all, but if I wiggle it, F3 doesn't seem to do anything, and F1 doesn't seem to do anything, we're struggling. So we need to take a look at them keys. So let's just pop that penultimate cartridge in now, and um, let's have a look, see if it actually runs games and make sure that the sounds are all okay. So that's with the penultimate cartridge in now. As you can see, we've got penultimate on the screen now. So future of 8-bit titles, let's have a quick look. I don't know what Vicky Bird is anyway, let's have just have a quick look at games. Demon Attack. Donkey Kong. Let's see if that starts up. And you have to remember with the Vic 20s you've got to move the cartridge screens into place with the cursor keys. Um, otherwise you're not going to have a correct screen. Oh, so you can only go left and right on this one, so F1 for more options. Finally went in, didn't it? Look, F1. Wiggle it, it, it comes on. F1 at the start. So you can see we've got sound. We've got the wrong keys or not. So F5 is the level, F1, if I wiggle it, it'll start. F5 is options, two player level skill, F5 level skill, let's take it right up <laughs> and wiggle that F1 key. So we know that the F1 keys are a little bit iffy, so I mean, it's got the tags that's broken off at the back, so I, I need to put some of them tags on to secure that down so it doesn't move anywhere, um, and we need to address and have a clean up of these. F1 keys connections with the board. So I'm going to do that now and then we can uh, progress. So I've popped the lid off and we've got the keyboard here now. As you can see we're going to have to have a look at these F1 keys. I'm not going to take them off but we've got a lot of screws to take out of the back of here. I'm not going to take the main board ones out. I'm only going to take these little tiny screws out. I'm hoping that I can lift this. I'll feed these wires through enough to be able to lift that corner up and move it to one side because the F keys are, mind you we won't, I might need not to bother the F, the, the F keys are down this side just here so we only need to do the F keys really so I'm going to pull them screws out all them screws out um, so we can keep everything in true might not have to be even bother with them I might be lucky just to be able to lift it enough just to be able to clean them contacts down this side on these keys. So I'm going to do that now. Um, uh, once I've got all them out, I'll see you back shortly.
Right, so that should be all I'm out now. So we'll lift this cover up if I can for these wires. If not, I'm going to have to cut them and re-solder, but I really don't want to do that if I can help it. So they're carbon pads. These, these are all little carbon pads. It's completely different looking inside here to what it is inside a, a Commodore 64. I'm just shoving them out of the way over there, that way, so I can get to these carbon pads. And I'm only going to, all I'm going to do, I know I'm running my finger on it now, putting grease on them, but that, that, <laughs> there's not much I can do really. So I'm going to use a little bit of paper, normal standard paper, push down and just rub over them contacts um, just to give them a clean off. And then I'm going to use some IPA on the underside of the board to clean the contacts. So I just thought I'd use a little piece of that tin shield. It's a bit of cardboard look. And all I'm going to do is press down and I'm just going to rub over the top of them keys. Not too hard, not too dental, just, just enough to give them a roughing. They are carbon at the end of the day, we don't want to rub too much off. They do seem to be cleaning up a little bit better. Yeah, you can see, kind of see a little bit of muck coming off, but you can't really see too much. It's struggling really to see on the camera. So it's just a little bit of abrasive on top of these on top of these blobs to uh, just to take the surface off a little bit. You can't see much. There ain't much on back of there. You can see the odd little dot. Can you see that little tiny little dot? Yeah, that's about all that's come off. So there's not a lot on there. So I'm going to get a cotton bud and just give them a clean as well with a little bit of IPA. That's all I'm doing. Just a little bit of IPA on a cotton bud, and I'm just going to wipe across on the top of that pad. It will go black, look, you see that? See how it go black right away? So you've got to be careful, don't go too mad with it. Just a little bit of a rub over the top of there. Just clean that carbon off. Yeah, you can see, look, you see muck. There's a bit of muck, a bit of carbon that's coming off there. I'm going to really struggle getting under this keyboard, so I'm going to, I'm going to have to try and do this off camera. So apologies. I don't want to bust them wires on that, on that, and I don't want them all falling out neither. Well, they won't fall out because the keys are in. So I'm just going to push that underneath there, and let's hope the keyboard will fall to one side. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. So you can see them contacts down there now. They're not looking bad at all, to be honest. It could be a little bit of. Cleaning on them. Nah, there doesn't seem to be much muck coming off them. They are copper contacts, these ones as well. These are not these are not carbon, so you can give them a good scrub. We only need to do these ones anyway, because the uh, rest of the board was okay. I could go around and do the whole board, but if they're working okay, <laughs> there's no point in disturbing. Let, let sleeping dogs lie, you know, in saying that, I'm just here now. We'll do the return key because that's quite common. <laughs> we'll give that a bit of a clean off. And then you go off on a tangent and you start doing them all. <laughs> so I'm going to leave it there. We've got all these cleaned up now. So I'm just going to flip that board back over and put it back together. Right, so there we go, we've got all the screws back into the keyboard. Um, I've just put a little bit of sellotape over the top of that to try and keep it original because it's got dates on there and things like that. Try and keep it as much original, original as possible. So I've got these clips to sort out at the back now. Um, but what I don't want to do first is I just want to fetch that other base unit with the motherboard in it. And pop it back together and let's see if these F1 keys work properly again now and the other rest of the keyboard work then we can have a look at repairing these uh, standoffs at the back of here on the back so we can put the case back down
it does have um, a hole in one of the other front keys. You know these screws in the three screws at the front. If you look at this one over here, it's still got a screw in it. It's lost its little circle on the other board. So if I show you that now, look, you can see there. Look, it's got one there. Look, and that's fine. That one's fine. And that one's got a good dirty grit big hole in it. So I'm going to have to 3D print something for that a bit later so we can secure that back up. I'm just going to pop that back down there again for a minute. We'll flip that over. Put the LED light back in. That's that on. This is a little bit difficult, this keyboard connector. It's a bit different because it's got a it's got like a, a back size to it. The, normally on like the Commodore 64s, they don't have anything on there. It just has um, a set of pins stuck up, to be fair. And that's gone down now. Let's pop the lid on. Plug the aerial lead back in. Can I find it? It's in there somewhere. There we go. Plug this power cord back in. Switch it on. I'm going to pan you up. So there you go, I found you back up. You can see me. Gooey! And there you go. There we've got the menu now for the penultimate cartridge. Um, it is a PAL unit because it's just flashed up on the bottom left side of the corner. Um, what I'm going to do is press, it says here, press F1 for OK. I'm going to press F1. That worked instantly. Did you see that? So I'm just going to go back into the menu system again. Um, F. 2 is for 3K RAM expansion, so if I press SHIFT and F1 we've got, we've got a 3K RAM expansion that you can see up here now look so we can tell that them buttons are working back to the menu F5 would be if you want it, so let's try 35K yep, we've got 28 bytes free which is really good so that's showing that that's working then we'll just double check the F7 key, which should be SD to IEC file browser, but we ain't got that plugged in, so it ain't going to do anything. It's just going to take us back to the ready prompt, which it does. So just check the restore key. Yep, that returns. That's okay. The arrow keys are still okay. Everything else is all all right. As you can say, as you can tell, the, these pet keyboards. Are very noisy. I'm going to fetch that little Vic up here. In fact, I've got a Commodore 64 here, so I'm just going to fetch the Commodore 64 up, which is a different style keyboard. Let me just pan you down. I don't know if they can hear that now. Listen to that. Yep. And if we just move away and go onto this keyboard. Very noisy are these pet keyboards, but they are beautiful. They are really, really nice. They look completely different from comparison to the other ones. Even the keys themselves, if you look at the Commodore keys, you can see how the slope, how they're sloping upwards. They're right at the very top. But then when you look at the Vic ones, let me just put that away. And then when you look at the Vic ones, they don't. They don't slope at all. The, the keys are, are all upright. They're all facing straight up. There's no curve to it like they did on the Commodore 64. Um, even the even the F1 keys is the different. But they are a beautiful keyboard. I do really do like this. So it is a little bit yellow, is this? So it is going to need a re retro bright in a bit of time. Somebody did post on my last video that they wanted to see me do a retro bright. I'm just waiting for a bit more sun. Here in the UK, we don't get it that often. Unfortunately, most of the time when I get the sun, it's while I'm working Monday to Friday, um, which I miss out on the sun. So it's difficult for me to retro bright while I'm working. Um, so I'm, I'm waiting for the sun on a weekend and then we can get this retro brighted up and make it look like new again. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is we're going to address them rear clips at the back here that are broken off um, with some clips that I've made. So I've trimmed them down a little bit, but what, what you get, they're all different sizes these clips. So what I did is I 3D printed these clips. 
as you can see what they do is oops they just go up against the board like that and that creates your, your little tag at the top there so you just need to bond these to the back of the case but if you can see how thick they are some of them are thinner some of them are thicker so I've had to trim these ones down and just use some clippers as you can see the big difference in them in there all right, so I've taken the keyboard back off the top and moved the base unit out of the way. Um, all I've got is a little bit of sandpaper here, which I'm just going to run into these little gaps down here. That will do when I've folded the sandpaper small enough. Let's see if that goes in there better. That should do. Yeah. So as you can see, all I've done there is put that in there. All I want to do is rough that up a little bit so it's got some roughness there. Same with the other one. It's just so you're taking any films off or you're taking back down to nice clean plastic. So it's got something better to bond to and a bit more of a key. Sorry for the noise. So that's them sanded down, that's all we need to do. I'm going to get these little strip clips here, what I've put on here as well. So I'm just going to give them a little sand. Shouldn't have to, there's plenty of keyable items on there that we can use. But just give it a little rough up, make sure there's no greases on it, a bit like the other ones. So they're going on there okay. Clean up the shoulder where it sits in onto the case. Make sure there's no burrs there from when I've cut, trim, trimmed them down, otherwise it won't sit properly. Right, so that's all that done. We've done with his sandpaper now. I'm going to take a little bit of IPA, and all we're going to do is clean up them areas that we've just sanded to get any remnants of the dust about gone. We should do that with all four, four, three. <laughs> so they should be really clean now. I'm going to do the same with these clips. Just make sure there's nothing on there. They're all nice and washed off. And we're just going to let them dry on their own accord. So that should be dried off for now. Now I'm not using a great deal. I'm just going to use a bit of Loctite super glue um, and bond these into place. This lid will come off. I don't know. All the oh yeah, we're working. <laughs> so I'm just going to put a little squirt if I can. A super glue on there. I'm going to put a squirt of glue on here, right up into that brim, and then mess it about down here right around the bottom we want some glue up there so i'm gonna put that down let's flip this over now it's sticking to my fingers <laughs> no don't get super glowy fingers i'm gonna put that in there and i'm just gonna push it up to its point to where it should sit so if we have a quick look at them now you can see how they work. So we've got those little clips in place. They should go straight into the um, casing at the other side and hold that back down now. So what I want to do is just leave that for five or ten minutes while the glue sets on them clips. So there you go. You can see how them clips sit in there now. They're just sitting there nice and neatly. Um, I'm just going to pop them back now and put the keyboard back in. Then we'll have a check over and make sure it's uh, working again that's the keyboard in there so just shut this lid down now and then I'll come back to you
Right, so I've got them clips back in. All the cases now securely at the back lock. We can nice and solid. We're all back together. We've got our keys working. So I'm just going to have a little play of a game now and we'll have a look and see if it's working properly. So I'm just going to pan you up now and we'll uh, fire a game up. So there you go, we're into the menu of the penultimate cartridge. And we'll go into games. Battleships, Dig Dug. Let's have a little bit of Dig Dug. So here we are with the Dig Dug. This joystick's a bit... This is that joystick that we're playing on the Commodore 64. It didn't want to go left. Can you see it? Yeah. See? <laughs> so I'm not doing very well, but we know it's the joystick. Struggling look. Let's try this way. It's going all up. Oh, it's going, it's going. He's going to run away now, look. See ya. <laughs> joystick keeps sticking left and right. I do need to look at this joystick. This is the joystick that we were playing on the Commodore 64 and it wouldn't go left. Huh. Bit of cheating there, look. We cleared that round off as well. So yeah, so yeah, there you go. It's, it's, she's up and running. Is the comma is the Commodore Vic Twenty uh, with the pet keys? We just turn the sound down on that for you. So yeah, so I would say that's a, a nice fix. Sorted and done and dusted. We've got ourselves a, a nice Vic Twenty with the pet style keyboard. Absolutely awesome. I've got a lot of other things going on. Um, that I'm going to be showing over the next couple of weeks. We have got quite a lot of bits and pieces in. Um, I bought a new oscilloscope, the other one packed up. Um, so if there's anything that you want to see, just, just put down something down in the comments. Um, I've also posted a link now in the description for um, donations, if you feel like donating and helping on the channel. I don't have Patreon yet, I'm only just starting out. Um, if you want to donate any goods to help me out with the channel, please use the email that you can see at the beginning and at the end of the videos and I'll put that in the description as well for you um, so yeah so thank you very much for watching another episode of the 8-bit retro refix and we'll see you on the next one bye